this right here should be working. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, here we go. How you guys doing out there? We had a few technical difficulties and stuff like that. And, ooh, yeah, that's ugly. Hang on. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Hobby Hall, where we are going to make a few things and talk about a few things. And, yeah, this is what I like to consider as my most interactive show. How you guys doing out there? I'm Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer. And yeah, I was doing some stuff and I'm just sitting up going like, oh man, why isn't this working? And I'm like, oh wait, I screwed with buttons. That was one of the things that I did. And it was terrible because, you know, whenever you start screwing with buttons, you know, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm middle-aged because I'm literally sitting up and I'm like, oh, I don't know, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. So, as I said, welcome to the Hobby Hall. And we are going... Well, this is the first episode of the month of April. And I'm like, hmm, do I do an April Fool's thing with these guys? No, no, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. And we got the circuit boards behind us because we are here to make stuff. That is what we are doing. We are making things and we're like, yeah, no, what's going on? Bye, bye, bye. We're going to make something. That's, that's what's going on on that but before we start to make stuff let's just hurry up and get down to business do not start singing mulan please do not um if you guys um are interested in what we're doing and you like what what we're all we're all about and all that stuff say what's up in the chat if you're lurking and you know i promise you we're not those kinds of people that are like get good noob get out of here yeah no no we don't i, I don't even play that game our moderators are like boot 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 um because right now with this hobby and a lot of other things that we've been doing we are not about trolls we're not about like oh yeah well i'm just trying to trigger some people yeah no no sorry and besides where i come from when somebody's triggered there's gunplay so i don't really like upsetting people um because you never know you never know the person that you are um that you're going to be messing with no. um sorry i found i saw that my ponytail was off center and all that because i don't have a mirror in the studio it's a little weird but um yeah all right there we go i got my mirror all right cool at least i got my ponytail going so um but before we do anything else we're going to get down to a little bit of business if you guys like what we're doing here you want to hang out you want to talk with us you want to say what's up or you have like any long-winded questions and that's the thing a long-winded question um that is simple all you got to do is pull up um ooh, whoa what is that no 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 skip it skip it skip it no i just uh, i want to go back here i just uh, i just want to go back here all you got to do is pull up your keyboard open up your email say hi email what's going on and type in to your email back in the deck at gmail.com it's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k at gmail.com that way you can send us emails and compliments or if you're gonna tell us that we suck do so via email it makes it a lot easier and we might even be able to open a dialogue and if you don't want us to then put in the subject matter you suck do not reply and um head over to our youtube channel subscribe like hit the button do all that stuff find us on social media <coughs> you know the social medias you know you know we're talking of course instagram and twitter and um you know hit us up there check out the stuff the pictures that we post 
you know, ask us questions and all that. If you want to get into spirited discussion, and I mean discussion because I don't do public um, debate because I don't like debating for theater. It's just not my bag. It's not, I, I don't like doing it. I'm not going to do it. I don't like doing it. That's, that's just how we go. And of course, um, if you are on that wretched hive of scum and villainy known as Facebook, then join the group Deckers on the Book. Um, that way you guys can talk to us, you guys can ask us questions. We do a lot of like exchange of open source PDFs and you know, things like that. And of course, um, thank you guys for showing up. Now a lot of people are saying, and yeah, I've been told in the past, I just, I just can't watch your show, man. I just can't watch your show. It's just talking head. I can't, I can't deal with the talking head. It's like the TV is talking to me and it's all weird. And I'm like, okay, all right, no, no, calm down, calm down, uh, do your thing. Um, if you don't really want to deal with that kind of thing, I got you. All you got to do is head over to soundcloud.com slash BID underscore P and you can download our stuff and listen to it at your leisure. That's what you can do. You can listen to it when you're in the car, when you, when you go on long road trips after all this stuff is up and let's face it, we're sheltering in place. We got nothing better to do. So head on over there. Give us a listen download some of the stuff because you can keep all of it for free honestly like um it's part of where our profits go because i want to make this stuff available for everyone but at the same time i got to keep the lights on y you know what i mean so it's a balance it's a balance it's a delicate delicate balance delicate delicate balance delicate 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 oh never mind never mind oh sorry i've been watching a lot of stuff concerning cats not cats but stuff about cats and um, if you want to help us keep the lights on, you just want to head on over and throw money at me, I'm not going to say no. I'm just going to ask you to head over to patreon.com slash BID underscore P. Hey, look at all that. We got like a slick logo and all that stuff. And if you think that what we do is as cool or as valuable as a packet of cupcakes or a box of pens from the 99 cent store, be a decker, you know, and I'm talking like a month, you know, if we're cooler than, than a packet of pencils a month, then come on over, be a decker for just a dollar, one dollar. If you've got more to spend, then cool. You know, um, we have different tiers, there are different rewards. Um, starting at this tier, I gotta give you a shout out in every episode, like I do to Her Majesty Shannon Boomlay, who is at the Queen level. And of course, um, Paul Mansfield, or His Majesty Paul Mansfield, um, who is at the King level, and as always, our ace in the hole, Jennifer Kroll. So, we have a lot of stuff to talk about today because we did a lot of stuff last month. We did a whole lot of things, and this is our show. Um, this is the long one. Like most of the casts that we do every week are just an hour long, but this this is our long. This is we are in for the long haul, and why? Because this is the show where I literally, and I mean that, I literally set up stuff so that you guys can make stuff with me. Um, I was talking to a decker just yesterday, just yesterday. And the, um, and the Decker was like, oh, dude, I never even thought about doing the crafts and stuff with you. And you know what? That's my bad. That's literally my bad. Because I don't send out the notice early enough for people to, um, gather up their supplies, you know, gather up whatever they're they're doing around the house so that's my bad sorry about that i'm gonna get better on that because this is this is the show that takes most of the prep during the week i gotta figure out what we're crafting figure out the difficulty level um and when i say that everything that i have us craft on this show um it should be able to be done by beginning crafters okay beginning crafters um the reason for that is this i have a mom i talk about her a lot i i love i love the hell out of my mom i really do and she is a really good crafter 
um, she could always draw, she did makeup, um, she went to cosmetology school, so she learned how to do, um, makeup and all that stuff. Now you didn't miss much, Vixen, you didn't mix much, um, yeah, our folks, so, um, yeah, Vixen over in, um, NP City is like, oh god, I'm sorry I'm late, did I miss anything? No, 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 um, but yeah, so, one of the reasons that, like I said, I, I, I love the crap out of my mom, and she could draw, and she went to cosmetology school, she's, she's just an artist and a crafter all the way around, so I've been doing this my whole life, not specifically crafting for games, but growing up poor in the ghetto, being raised by people who were sharecroppers in the early 1900s, we had a saying around our house um, of take what you got, make what you want out of it. That, that's what, you know, make what you want out of it and uh, do your thing, do, do your thing, all right? So I put this show together so that people who want to get into stuff can take what they got and they can make cool stuff out of it. You know, I've been doing this kind of thing my whole life, but I never had context for it. And when I first got into minis gaming and d and I saw all this elaborate stuff and I'm like, oh my God, I wish I could do stuff like that. Fortunately, um, I made it to college and I did all that stuff. And while I was in college, um, I went to film school and sure enough, um, from film school, I ended up getting a job at a special effects warehouse. Now, they started me out on fiberglassing. Suck. Suck. Oh my God. Fiberglassing is so freaking suck tacular um essentially we would take the molds and we would fiberglass them in and we would take like uh, um a um paintbrush or chip brush as they called it because it was a really cheap 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 paintbrush and we would push all the stuff in and push all the little air bubbles out and that part was kind of cool except when the resin dried it dries like glass or plastic and when it breaks it's all sharp and the mesh that we're putting in is literally glass like it feels like fabric but it's glass and itchy glass at that and then when we would have to sand stuff down we'd be throwing particles of glass all over the place and you know this is why we we would have to wear respirators and stuff because that will kill you relatively quickly um, and by that I mean like over the course of 10 years, like cancer is, is a thing. So whenever someone's doing your home insulation, you thank them. Anyway, um, so I learned about a lot of that stuff, but everybody that was around me grew up middle class and they were like, they had train sets and they put cars and stuff together and they just couldn't wrap their head around the fact that that wasn't me. You know, in the words of Credence, I ain't no millionaire, son. It ain't me. It ain't me. You know, that that's not what I did. So, um, you know, and of course, I ended up losing the job because I wasn't very good at it. And I couldn't get training on it. Okay. And that was a big thing. But over the years, you know, I've developed my crafting and stuff. And I'm not great. I'm really not. But I make the stuff I want to make. <laughs> And, um, and the thing is, this stuff isn't hard. Sometimes it's tedious, but it's not difficult, okay? Um, and for all of us that are on shelter in place and remain indoors, <coughs> um, yeah, for all of us that are doing that kind of thing, I get it. I, I get that it's a thing. Um, so what do we do when we're in? And I'm like, this is the perfect time to do crafting especially if people have to go out and make supply runs um there is a lot of stuff that isn't being hoarded that's really inexpensive that we can do this stuff with. example these paints are like a buck and a quarter if you can find a fabric store that's open um excuse me craft paint super easy if you have a local big box store that sells them then you're in some serious serious luck because a big box store is like Home Depot, Lowe's, that's what we have here in Southern California. I don't know if there's any other places. Um, and of course, I use a lot of extruded polystyrene, okay? Um, known as XPS. And in the, in the special effects industry, death foam. And this stuff is great for crafting, but it's illegal 
to sell in and now it, it's home insulation but it's really sold in places that get snow and we don't get snow here in southern california um we, we just don't it, it snow don't come here you know um i laughed growing up in south central it was such a terrible neighborhood that not even the weather would come over so um but they do sell small amounts of this and like two foot by two foot by one inch um sheets and that's perfect for the scale of the stuff that we do here um and if you don't have access to that i love this stuff and this is what we're going to make today this is like a couple of millimeters thick but this is foam core you can get this at the dollar tree at um most craft stores um dollar tree 99 cent store and if you're like me and you live either in the ghetto or ghetto adjacent a lot of bodegas sell this stuff for a buck and you get like a 20 inch by 30 inch sheet of this for like a dollar a buck and a quarter and this will help you go for days and this is what we're going to be using today um i might do something with the xps but it's not as plentiful as i'd like it to be so i'm i'm, I'm really giving it some fun but today today we are going to check out the stuff that we've been working on for the past month now for the past month we've been making dungeon tiles walls um doorways and stuff like that for your fantasy settings but you might be asking okay well we're making all this stuff but what is it good for you know and the answer is dioramas um i have a friend with the coolest name i have ever heard in my okay one of the coolest names i have a lot of friends with a lot of cool names I have a friend who whose mama named him Rock, and his last name is awesome. And I'm not gonna say it because this is a public platform. Um, and of course, I have um, I have another friend who um, who is named Stony. I'm like I have a friend named Stony, and this is awesome. And he is really in two things like um, well, he likes to collect. Um, Hot Wheels and he's like dude I'm loving what you're doing with all this stuff can I make a diorama and all that jazz um, and I'm like yeah sure if you want hang on sending a quick message there we go always got to take care of family y'all take care of family um, although family always loves to bug you while you're working don't, don't you love that it's like what we're family you can take five minutes for me no I can't Ah, I got people after a piece. So you're asking like, what are we doing with all this stuff? As you know, we came in and we made dungeon tiles and we made walls and we made doors. And what do you do? What do you do? Now, for older viewers of the show, y'all know I hate dungeon delving. I really do. Um, or more to the point, I hate dungeon delving as a reflexive story element. You know, but ain't gonna lie. Sometimes, sometimes, um, when people want to get together and play a game, a dungeon delve is quick. And by quick, I mean you can just you can go over to some place like uh, Drive Through RPG and download a free dungeon, and there you go. Um, yeah, I mean it, it's there. Or um, it's real simple. You come up with some sort of labyrinth, some kind of maze. And, um, yeah, hang on. I'm doing this right now. There we go. Yes, a dungeon. Now, do, 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 do. Yeah, let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm over at uh, Drive Through RPG. I'm pulling out a dungeon. Price zero. <laughs> That's my second favorite price. And look at this dungeon tiles that you can download. Um, ah, yeah, castle map collection, free. Um, D and D conversion manuals from second edition to third, free. Character sheet, free. Um, oh, Barcod's tomb, yoink. Um, yeah, and of course, you know, stuff from Emerald Giant game, dungeon crawler names, um, tavern collection, just you know, um, and that's just one resource online to pull a dungeon from. So, given that we're on lockdown, and I'm running a lot of games online right now, 
So I'm like, all right, do I pull out a dungeon or two? Well, I may as well. I may as well just be like, hey, boom, dungeon finished. <laughs> now let's let let's play. Um, and a lot of dungeons can be a lot like a board game or a video game because let's face it, Doom, Wolfenstein, um, um, most first-person shooters either have a dungeon crawl level or is just um, a really big extrapolated dungeon. And if you don't believe me, you tell me, why is there a sewer level in L.A. Noir? <laughs> no, I don't play video games, but I watch a lot on YouTube. Anyway, um, so it's like we've put together all these things, and if, and I mean this, um, if you guys have put together a lot of this stuff in the same way as I have, okay, um, I want to show you guys the things that we have come up with. Okay, because we've been doing a lot. So over the past two months, um, some of our shows have been about where let's make some of these, huh? Bridges, yay, bridges for miniatures games, and you know, doorways and dungeon tiles and stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you know, what does all this stuff look like once it's all the way up? Well, let's take a look. Oh yeah, look at what we got here. You know, these are all things based on, now, I made a couple of corrections. As you can see here, these are the walls right here. These are the walls that we made. And I'm like, yeah, but when I put them together and I put the figures next to them, I wasn't happy. Uh, I wasn't happy because it was really hard to get in there, really hard to plug it out. So. I did, I did the logical thing. I cut them in half, <laughs> you know, I cut them in half and these worked out great and it doubled the amount of walls I had. You know, if you can see, yeah, this, the whole floor, you know, we did that in like our second or third episode and that literally the floor up to here. So all of this floor, that's one piece, just one piece of the foam core that was it one piece of foam core using these techniques it took me a night and the longest part about that night was waiting for the black bomb to dry and then outside of that yeah that was that was um some of the good stuff so yeah and as you can see over here we got the dungeon walls that are the tavern walls that we made last week you know um yeah, we got a big rock formation from when I first started and I didn't have a foam cutter. Um, you know, some of the tables and stuff. You know, yeah, we got Wonder Man and the Huntress down here walking through a dungeon. You know, these are some dungeon doors from a game called Mage Knight that was out like, God, how long? Um, 15, 16 years ago. But yeah, yeah, like I said, I, I just cut these things in half and then um, I repainted the tops. <laughs> and um, this was one of the originals. This was one of the ones I cut in half. Oh, no, wait. This is one of the originals. This is one of the ones I cut in half. And I could reach the figures and do all that stuff. So that was nice. Um, and yeah. And here we have the science fiction stuff. You know. And here are what those platforms look like once they're set up. You know. That is some of the stuff that we got. Oh, look at that. Yeah. No, the truck is not part of the thing. Um... And I had some 3D printed parts. Now, if we go back here, this right here, this door, you know, is, um, that's a door that we can, um, that's a door that you can order from WizKids or eBay, Amazon's on strike, so good for them. Um, and they're two for five bucks. Two of those doors for five dollars. And as you can see, there's one here, and I put one inside uh, one of my big walls help kept it help keep it together and yeah these things are freaking great um if you don't feel like making your own wall or you want a different flavor you know this was five dollars so if you got it cool if not of course you can make your own there's one of the first first doors we made there's the one we made last week you know the paint jobs uh, they could be better but i don't care <laughs> um and um oh wait there there we are and of course, um, within context, you know, we have some of our figures here. You know, hey, look, I'm on top of a thing. Look at me, I'm, I'm running around. 
Um, I've got some 3D printed parts here. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is just the stuff that we got going. And, um, you know, and these are just miniature neutral games. Yesterday we talked about a new, uh, new one. We can use that stuff for D&D or whatever, whatever, um, whatever miniature neutral game you got or whatever you're running. Um, and we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about that. But let's get to crafting. So we got all that cool stuff, right? Yeah, all that cool stuff. Oh, yeah, the chat's like talking. We had a meetup. Uh, yeah, the chat, um, you know, with some of the people that were in the chat, we had a meetup. And we played um, Rangers of Shadow Deep on one of these boards. And they were like, dude, this is actually kind of fun. I'm really liking this. This is all that stuff and you know make a quick character play through the stuff and you know um there was a whole lot of really nice stuff let me see what we can do here gift a subscription i shouldn't have said that out loud yeah there we go um let me see here sorry for the torch id okay. Ah, there we go. There we go. Boom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, doing a quick thing right here. Because, yeah. Finally. Mm-hmm. Oh, gotcha. All right. So, yeah, look at that. All right. Well, I tried to give someone a subscription, but I don't have any money yet. Um, but that's okay. Their time will come. Their time will come. Anyway, um, as I was saying, um, so yeah, these are things that we can do. Um, but no board is complete without two things. Someone to play with and something to happen. Um, a good amount of the times when you're playing games, there's a lot of things that... Um, the person who's in charge has to think up and wonder about and sometimes it can be it, it can be daunting so today we're gonna make stuff that's part of your game board um, that um, how can I put it airs on the side of super awesome and what I mean by that is today we're making traps okay yeah we are gonna make some traps and other conditions for your game board and that is now be warned this stuff is not exactly easy to store but it's kind of cool now i will let you guys know what we did but um for those of you guys that are out there right now that might want to play along all you need is a cereal box some toothpicks maybe some hot glue if you've got foam core then get to it um, foam core some sort of cutting tool i'm a fan of box cutters oh wait yeah i'm a fan of box cutters that's um that's my jam um and um a ruler because you don't really need a lot with this as far as paints and all that stuff go don't worry too much about it and all that stuff but let's get to the table so if you guys remember we made this thing for textures all right uh, look at the, all those textures and all that stuff but i didn't really have anything to do with this and i'm like all right well let's make some traps because no game board is fun um on its own you got to be able to do something with it you know what can we do let's let's do something so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make some traps all right now for the traps we're gonna need a simple thing all right now there's a lot of things and no I have not pre-made one because that's not how this show works um, the major things that we're gonna need are we're gonna need to cut our stuff into squares that are about two and a half inches by two and a half inches okay now I cut out a bunch of masonite because that's my second favorite um, crafting material masonite is fun um, it's also sturdy and I go along with that. Now, what I'm gonna do is first, I'm going to take a square and I'm gonna square this um, to get rid of all the folding and 
all the wackiness on that. Alright, so yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do. Now, if you're a lot like me, you're always trying, like, trying real hard, and I mean, like, real hard, most of the time, to save materials, alright? You're really trying to save materials. So, with the materials that you're trying to save, you're like, no! I'm gonna need that little piece of scrap, no! This will cost you more time, more energy. Throw it away. Just call it a day. Call it a day. Get out of there. Get more time. You know, and you'll have more time and more energy to do the stuff that you actually want to do. Okay? That is important. So what we're going to do is we are going to measure out um, a square. Okay? Now, a lot of people are like, no, don't use, um, don't use a square like this. Um, you're not going to get everything straight. Stuff is going to move. And yeah, you see all that shifting? So, you have to push it hard. And what I like to do is once I have my measurement, okay? Once I have my measurement here, okay? This is about the size that I want right there, okay? I then take a ruler, push it hard against the square, make sure everything is good. And I remove the square. Now I can cut all the lines square. Okay. Cool. Okay. Now when you cut with a box cutter. You are going to get something called blade drift. And that is a thing that will make it so that your blade is going to go to one direction or another. And honestly, it's, it's kind of irritating. But don't worry about it. This is about getting the job done. Not being perfect, but getting the job done. Okay? And we're just going to measure out two and a half. And why two and a half? You guys are asking me that question. Right? Well, two and a half is because um, most maps that you get are going to be um, measured in inches. Okay? I can't stand that. I can't stand things that are measured in inches. And one of the reasons, see, this is why I have the key piece of masonite so that you guys can see my hands. Um, one of the reasons that I don't like stuff that's measured in inches is because most of the bases for a mini is the better part of an inch, all right? And I will show you the complication of that in just a sec. Good. Okay, we got a couple. We're going to cut out a few more, but I wanted to show you guys this. So, we've got... Yeah, um, yeah. So, an inch. We'll just mark it there. One inch. By... One inch. Cool. So mark and cut. Of course, this is a scrap piece. There we go. Cool. Okay. Yep, that's about it. Not perfect. Not square. Don't care. What we have here is this is a one-inch square. Okay. Now it fits a mini pretty cool. Let's uh, get a little closer. See, it'll fit a mini pretty cool, right? I mean, you got this, and you see the base of the mini. That's it. See the base of the mini, but you see there's no room, okay? So if you want to put a wall there, then it pushes and there's no room for the mini. I don't like that. 
I've never liked that. It makes the rooms a little smaller. So I cut my stuff via um, one of my favorite crafting YouTubers, Wylox Armory. And he cuts his stuff to an inch and a quarter. And that way, there's room for little additions of them. Like, um, you know, inch and a quarter, right there. There we go. So an inch and a quarter. Now look at that. Okay, wait, turn it over to the side that y'all can actually see. I dropped it. When you cut the stuff to an inch and a quarter, then on the lines, you've got space for a wall. You know, and that is awesome. Doesn't matter where you are, you've got space. So even two of the walls, if you decide to go to a corner, you've got all that and space for a model. And I'm a big, big fan of that. One of the reasons is, of course, um, math. <laughs> if you don't have room for your model, right? Oh, hang on here. This was your... Huh? Ah, uh, yeah, if you end up not having room for your model, um, you know, I've got some interference happening right now. You know, if you're off by just that little bit, the more walls you put, the more it's going to be off center. And forget about how it looks. You have to start asking your question, where is the mini standing? Okay, so that's one of the reasons I like cutting to an inch and a quarter. Okay, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go with these. And yeah, what we're doing now is we're just gonna cut out a bunch. Okay, just a bunch of these squares. At least two or three. Well, we got two, so let's, let's call it like uh, three or four. Okay, and they don't have to be great. They don't have to be wonderful. They just have to be roughly the right size. Um, again, ain't gotta be great, ain't gotta be wonderful. It may be time. Yep, most definitely. It's definitely time <coughs> for me to replace my blade. So I'm just gonna do this real quick. Pull this out and. Oh, I can use my mic stand. Give me a minute and. In there. Nope. <laughs> that was loud and obnoxious. I think I already did this one. Yeah, I did. All right. So yeah, that's what we need on that. Of course. Ziggy zaga, ziggy zaga. Oh. One. Two. All right. Now. Now that we got, we got that going, we're gonna roughly measure out a square. Okay, you see? See how we got that there? Uh, that's, that's about two squares, so just to make sure it fits on the thing, we're just gonna square this up um, with one of my dungeon tiles. You see all that weird, wacky, messed up stuff right there? Don't worry. This adds to texture. There is no such thing as doing this wrong. Okay? Except for, you know, not getting the measurements right. So, here we go. 
So we're just gonna use this line as our measuring piece. Make sure that, ooh, there we go. That goes down, and remember, remember kids how we were making the, um, the lines, you know, for our grid. Now again, you don't have to go grid, but just to get there, we're just gonna cut a little bit down, a little bit down, and then, a little bit down. That's all we gotta do. We don't wanna get through on the paper. We don't want that. No, no, no. Here, a little bit down, a little bit down. Now we've got our squares. Now from here we take our pencil and our pen, or, or our pen, and don't worry, when we black bottom this, this jazz, this is going to come out good. But there we go, we got our grits. Now you see this really messed up one? This is what's important, okay? When you are making dungeon stuff, understand that um each uh if you're playing like a standard dungeons and dragons type game you gotta understand that each um each tile or not each tile but each um each space on the dungeon tile each of these um little things are about yeah, I'll cut these a little too large. Um, each of the dungeon tile spaces is about, and I'm saying roughly, five feet. Okay? So, that is a really, really big trap. Okay? And, um, so, that's a real thing. Alright? Um, so, I'm saying this to illustrate how each trap, okay, each trap in a game is roughly a square one singular square and you might be asking the well, solar if it's only one square then why are you making four are we going to make four traps at a time no we are not going to make four traps at a time um but what we are going to do is we are going Hang on. I'm having this conversation with you while making all of um, um while making the other cuts for the other um, traps. We're gonna we're gonna put together about four traps today, and, and I don't mean like the music. Yeah, no, no. But, yeah, I'm putting all that down, and. Um, I really like having one of these yellow squares. Um, it makes the job so much easier. Um, now, if you guys are out there and you're like me, and you play Hero Clicks a lot, you might have some maps whose um, grids are drawn on, and they're already an inch and a half. And that's cool. All you have to remember is the scaling. One square five foot moving on okay um but why aren't we making these one square wide i will tell you i've been trying to make stuff like this for years for years okay? and i've made lots of different traps different conditions especially for games like hero clicks and rangers of shadow deep and um dungeons and dragons where it's like you can materialize a five foot uh, a five foot pool of water you can do a five foot fish you can do a five foot bag you can do a one square this but essentially um so i would make stuff that would be exactly that one square and you know what happens to me unfailingly I lose them and I can't stand that I can't stand losing them um just like a freaking sting song I can't I can't I can't stand losing um so I'm gonna let you guys catch up with me and 
just make four of them just just make four of these things real quick and um, I will give you guys the slideshow um, to give you guys like some inspiration hey pub what's going on um, <laughs> impossible is like I've been here the whole time um, but yeah and um, I gotta grab um, a thing really quickly because um, yeah I just want to make sure that I can do the cool thing okay I'll be right back All right, so for really real confession time, um, <clears throat> I've had some tools for a while. I have um, a cool like chop saw, like a circular chop saw thing. So I made a bunch, a bunch of these, um, a bunch of these tile-based um, masonite things. Now, if you've got the tools to do it, cool. But yeah, that's cool. Um, hey, thanks. <laughs> Chat's like, pictures look great. So, what are we gonna do? Well, <laughs> this is where we start getting creative and having fun, okay? Um, the next thing that we need is way back in Da Nang. Actually, most, most traps you've heard about with war stories and um and other type things all right so the first trap that we're going to make is super super simple all right so let's get to it first trap we're going to make is a spiky spiky pit so what we're going to do is we're going to take some toothpicks ah toothpicks and we are literally just gonna break them up break up the toothpicks I've got four here. I'm breaking up four toothpicks. Is um yeah. Just take the sharp ends off of four toothpicks. There we go. That's it. Four toothpicks. And we're gonna take one of our little tiles here. And our hot glue. Hooray, hot glue. And we're just gonna there we go. Now this is my lower temperature hot glue. Okay. And put it down there. Put on a pretty big glob. Spread it around. And why do we spread it around? And pull. Don't you guys spread around? You know. And we're gonna spread this around the whole square. And this is basic. You can decorate this stuff however you want. Okay? If you've got some skull pieces laying around, um, because you can afford to play cool games, um, then use them. If you went to the craft store and found some skull pieces, then yeah, go for it. Bah. And you see? Now, one of the things that I really like to do when I'm using foam core is I really like to stick it in there. I really like to get the spike and just punch it all the way through. Okay, every, um, the hot glue will help keep it in its place. 
Okay. Ah, uh, don't let it stick to you. Okay. Ooh. If other crafters watch this show, they're gonna be like, oh my god, he's got terrible, terrible hot glue discipline. And I do. Okay. There we go. Oh yeah. So, there we go. It's in there. Now, these are pretty long. Okay. Um, I like... I like to make them long just so that I can show, hey, this is dangerous. And then what we do once we get in there is we just glob that hot glue in there. You know, give it something to stick to. Um, need another stick. Another stick of hot glue. There we go. that the glue has a good place to go. This is an old sheet pop glue bag. So it's got some issues. Get it in there. Now one thing about using hot glue that I don't want to tell some people for a while is beware. Beware of using a lot of hot glue. If and I ain't trying to put anybody on blast, you know, but I, I will tell my experience. I made a bunch of stuff um, from the games, and I used hot glue as one of the main binders. Okay? And a funny thing happened when I did that. Um, I ended up leaving my gaming stuff in the car, and the hot day came around. And I'm just like, oh well, you know, it's a thing, and blah blah blah. So, um, a friend came over, and I'm like, oh yeah, let me show you some of the stuff I've been working on on one of my shows. And I pulled out everything, and it just fell apart. The hot glue did not hold. Okay? Yeah, it just, it, it didn't hold. And I'm just like, wow, the hot glue did not hold together. And that was kind of sick. So, yeah, so I'm just pulling out these strands of hot glue, but that's it. There's your spike trap, okay? Now, since I do a lot of hot gluing, um, and I've got these things, I'm just gonna wipe this around here. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. This is my bag, baby. Okay? Um, because what I'm gonna do is I am going to secure this to something solid, okay? There we go. Now, remember that thing? Yeah, just wipe it around, get it down there, get it in there. Now, you can do this, if you've got the materials, you can do this before you start hot gluing your spikes on. Yeah. But this is a real simple thing. Alright. And you might be wondering why we have that other piece. We'll show you when the time comes. Okay. There we go. Now we're just going to stick these spiky things on top of this. Stick it in there. And the best part is that since it's a trap, this is going to be a temporary tile. tough part is it's got these sharp bits and these sharp bits will probably break off in time but see as you can see since we used a little piece there it's all in texture and all that stuff but uh, we are going to retexture it and give it some more strength um once we um put on our black bomb but yeah so here we go this is our tile it's there and um it's got its own cool little thing. Um, and again, it's real. It's real. Um, now, if you guys are wondering, um, <laughs> wondering why or wondering what's up, yeah, I mean, this is one of the things. But you know, y'all know what's coming next because we already put it down there, right? Um, what's coming now? <laughs> 
Hang on here. I lost something. Oh, there it is. Yeah. What's coming next? That's simple. Um. Yeah. There we are. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, Nick. All right, all right, cool. I'll do that, I'll do that. So yeah, so now it's time for us to grab the black bomb. <laughs> all right, yeah, that's what we got. Woo boy. Yeah, that was, that, that's what we got. I swear, you, you have one guest star in the studio. And again, oh, look at that, yeah. And for you guys that are new to the show, the black bomb is really simple. Yeah, it's really simple. It's um, white glue, like Elmer's glue, um, and black paint. <laughs> That's it. And the reasons that I use this a lot, uh, we have a brush, we got our cheap little brushes. Um, yeah, the reason I use this a lot is this adds a lot of strength, um, to the materials. Okay. Now, if you don't have the black paint on it, that's fine. That's fine. That's the okay. thing. If you've got Elmer's glue, be liberal. Be super, super liberal. I mean, just slop it all in there. You know, slop this stuff in there. Put the black bomb on. All right. Yeah. Get the black bomb on. Um, get the paint in there. Now, one of the reasons that I do this with the paint, and a lot of crafters do this, I learned this off of YouTube from Wylock's Armory and DM Scotty and Black Magic Craft, <laughs> like so many people do it, um, is because the black paint will generally let you know if you missed the spot. Okay, so we use this a lot. And second, it acts as a base coat um, for the piece. Okay, a base coat and a primer. So it starts black. Blacker than the blackest black times infinity. Okay, so we black out the whole thing. Um, and the glue is really good at holding your paint. Okay, so it, it does three things. It gives it strength and rigidity. Um, it creates a protective barrier. And your first coat of paint is already done. All right, and I am a big fan of working efficiently. You know, again, everything we do on this show is a speed build. Um, and by speed build, I mean I don't really want to tie up your day for like three and a half hours, especially. Like, yeah, I'm taking advantage of the global pandemic because I know you guys are home. And if you're watching, you probably ain't got nothing better to do today. And I'm with that. I just, I'm, I'm trying to give you guys something to do. Okay, and there we go. Look at that. That is in there. Okay. Boom. That's in there. Now, we're going to paint up these spikes. Okay. And the reason that we paint them up is because, yeah, they're toothpicks, right? Um, but, do the spikes have to be wood in your game? Uh, I like metal spikes. You know, I'm a big fan of metal spikes. So yeah, so there we go. Look at that. Look at that. My, 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 my. Yep, yep, yep. That's in there. And now, that's it. That's done. Look, boom, boom. Oh wait, see, see? I missed a couple of spots. That's fine. And that's why the black paint is in there. Because I'm patient about a lot of things. Just, I'm not very patient with the things I make. So it is very much a do as I say, not as I do things. I think, okay, I'm telling you guys to be patient. Or be more patient, because I get it. And there we go. So now, we just put this away. And we work on a different trap. Okay? Now, the next trap. Um, the next trap is kind of funny. Um, because, what are the different types of traps that your people can get into? All right. Um, one of the things I love in traps, okay, are portals. Okay, I love the idea of um of hey, guess what? 
you step through the trap, and now you're going through a portal. So we're going to take a scrap piece, just a scrap piece of, of the foam, okay? And we are going to measure diagonally. Diagonally across one of the um, things. Boom, boom. And we're just going to make little things there. And now, we're going to draw a door. Just draw it. It ain't got to be that, that complicated. Okay? Now, you see how these things aren't even? That's fine. Brrr. Cool. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Okay? And now we're just going to cut along those lines. Just cut along those lines. What's important is that the base of it. Yeah, you see that? There. There. And now we're just going to give it a little character. Now we're going to take our hot glue gun, okay? And we are going to spiral. Spiral the thing out. Spiral. Okay. Our hot glue, notice I'm not putting any hot glue on it. I'm just drawing little circles. Okay. And now I'm going to circle and spiral out with the hot glue. Cool. Now, the trap. And you know what? I'm just going to add a little shine. Shine, 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 shine. Yeah, there we go. That's it. That's it. Ah! Ah! Oh, it's okay. All right. And that's it. That that's that's the whole thing. Okay. And why? Because now we'll take a, another one of these, and we're just gonna hot glue the whole thing to one of our bottom pieces. Again, these things do not have to be super elaborate. They're traps. They're temporary. They ain't that complicated. And now we're going to take our hot glue and we're just going to go along the bottom. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to do another spiral on this side because I like spirals. You know, I saw Dark City a whole lot. Um, yeah, there we go. Get another piece ready here, and now we're just gonna spiral out. Portal, portal, portal. This is a triumph. Uh, I'm being so sincere right now. There. Now, spiral. If you've got a better hot glue gun than I do, then congratulations. I've got a better hot glue gun, but it's high temperature. Yeah, there we go. Spiral, spiral. And now, a little bit more. Spiraling, and... Yeah. Spiral, and... And... Brat, brat, brat. Brat, 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 brat. Okay, there we go. And see, this is going... There we go. Sometimes when you use hot glue, it's going to dry. Okay? There we go. And now we stick this on diagonally. Okay. <laughs> and that's it. That's the whole thing. So, back to the cage rage. Black it out! Black it all out! Black it out! Arr! Arr! And as you see, this doesn't take a whole lot of time, or a whole lot of materials, or a whole lot of anything, really. You know? Um, one of the big things that I'm really big on is um, once you set up traps and portals and stuff like that, um, again, take what you got, make what you want out of it. If you got none but a cereal box, you can do this with a cereal box. You know, cardboard is easy. Um, all you need is cardboard and a razor blade. That's it. Or a really sharp knife. You know? 
Um, yeah. Here we go. There. It's like, stop, or I'll kill you with my knife. And, uh, yeah. So, as you see, we're just black bombing this thing. Getting the glue and all that stuff down there. Get them into these cracks and crevices. Yeah, crack and crevice. Now, if you notice, I'm redoing the top. Okay, because I want to give my hot glue some time to dry. That's it. This is, this is the thing. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Now, sometimes, um, you might want to do singular tile things because some of you guys might be going, but Solar, what if I want to make the trap in a hallway? Oh, I get you. And I'm not saying that you can't do it. I'm just, you know, we're going to make a singular hallway. Don't worry. I got you. Alright? But, I will show you the reason that I like it. And again, this is speed build. I don't spend, I spend a lot of days during the week planning out every single one of these shows. Okay? Every single one of these shows. So, here we go. Pop, 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 pop. Now, if you guys are noticing with this technique, um, there is one thing that you guys can put together using this technique, especially with the foam core and the glue, and we're not going to get into that um, on a show proper, okay? But if you notice, this didn't take any time, and you know what this can give you? Headstones. That's right. This little shape right here, digging it on, you get headstones if you want to make your players um, run through a cemetery. It ain't that critical. The number one thing is the black bomb. See, there we go. It's all blacked out. And now we put this aside, and we work on another tile. Another tile. Next one up. Now, this one. This one is simple. Okay, it's going to be super, super simple. Um, the quickest and easiest one that we're going to do. Now, down there. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark this tile with a little bit of glue. Boom. Boom. On every single one of the squares that I'm going to use. Okay. And now, we are simply going to there we go. Okay, now, we're going to swipe this on, make it real nice. And now make it real nice over here. Now we're going to combine the two things, alright? And the two things that we made, um, I'm sure you've noticed that they're both three-dimensional. Alright, so we're just going to slap that on right there, push it on down, blah, push. Good. Alright. <laughs> what? Get into the crevices if you want to live. <laughs> uh, get into the crevice if you want to live. <laughs> That's right. You know, wow, there was a joke. Now, what we're going to take is our, is our knife. And we're just going to cut out the shape. Cut it out. Okay. I'm going to go for as close to a circle-ish thing as I can get. Okay, but we're going to cut it out on the one that we didn't glue. Ah, you see? You see? I got my reasons. Look at all that. Look at my reasons. Okay. We're going to cut out the shape, and we're going to remove the shape. Now, this is very important. Remove the shape. Walk away. <coughs> okay? So, <coughs> after we remove the shape, we're just going to add the black bomb. Okay, because why not? This is going to take a hot second. All 
right? Because I am a big fan of Horizon. Get that Horizon. Okay? So, we're going to do this, and then we're going to cut out the shape on the last one. Because, you know, so far we've already been here an hour. Yeah, this is kind of a fun, you know, put together show. But yeah, again, I'm a big fan of making traps. Um, especially for dungeons and stuff like that. And we're gonna get to a point, and then we're gonna have a little talk. Yeah, we're gonna have a little talk. Don't worry, you're not in trouble, you're not gonna get grounded. Make sure to get in there. Get into the crevice if you want to live. Get to the crevice! Get to the crevice! Yeah, as you guys know, my voice is too high pitched and nasally to do a good on yeah. Sorry, I'm not that guy. Um, and unfortunately, the closest thing we've ever had to a high pitched action hero was uh, Bruce Willis and Die Hard. I know you guys have probably never thought about it, but listen to it again. Then the kids get together and have you laugh. You know, when I was growing up, I always wanted my voice to be, like, closer to Liam Neeson, you know? And I mean that, I'm serious. I, I, I was on the Liam Neeson train all the way back at Darkman, you know, because he's like, Ah, I'm a monster! Arr, arr, take the elephant! Take a freaking elephant! Arr. Okay. So, yeah. See what I'm doing here? Marking out three. Three little things. Now I'm gonna make the shape. Okay, now, traps come in two major flavors, guys. Two major flavors. Flavor one, external traps. Flavor two, internal traps. What does that mean? Simple. Um, an external trap is a trap that pops out to get you. Trap pops out to get you. Um, where an internal trap, or yeah, an internal trap is a trap that you end up going into. Okay, so that's what we're making. We're making two external traps, two internal traps. And it doesn't matter what the trap is, okay? It doesn't matter what the trap is. The question is, when you're caught in the trap, do you step into the trap? Or is the trap triggered by something and come after you? Okay, that's a big thing. Uh, one of my favorite traps, one of my absolute favorite traps, are mimics. Um, I watched a thing on YouTube earlier today that used mimics in ways that I love using them. But yeah, um, you know, once the mimic is awake, and for those of you guys that don't play things like Dungeons and Dragons, you've seen mimics on Dark Souls, where it's like, hey, that's a that's a cage. I have to free that person. Oh my God, the cage came alive and ate me. Or, all right, we're just gonna go right through this door. And oh my God, the door came alive and ate me. And, um, oh, cool, we got treasure. Oh my god, the treasure chest came alive and ate me. Essentially, a mimic is an inanimate object that comes to life and eats you. There's an old joke um, from D&D players. It's like, yeah, sitting in the tavern, you know, and I was telling um, I was telling the bartender, you know, about the adventure, and then we got attacked by mimics, but that was okay, because we got a lamp. They don't chase us. And, you know, the bartender was like, ah, you're a good adventurer. And, and, you know, he laughed, I laughed, the table laughed. It was a oh, good time to have. You know, yeah. And, you know, the idea of inanimate objects that have come to life to come and get you, I love. So, yeah, we got this one with that guy and that guy. Um, with that guy. As you can see, we're just waiting for this stuff to dry. Is it dry yet? No, no. Exactly. I'm just going to spread this out a little thinner. Okay. Most of the time you do black bomb, you want to wait overnight for this stuff to dry, but as you guys know, Elmer's glue is Elmer's glue. Now, I'm going to talk to you guys about black glue now, because I feel this is important to say. Um, when you are using these things, um, the, um, for your black bomb, Things like PVA glue, Elmer's glue, wood glue, um, those kinds of things, they are water soluble, which means once you start, um, once you start using any water-based substance like acrylic paint, it's going to reactivate the glue, possibly. So you got to get in there and you got to do it quick. This is why with most things that are black bombed, um, 
with um, PVA glue, um, you end up having to um, dry brush, okay? Now there are two ways around this that are super easy. One is to get some matte finish, okay? Matte finish in a spray can. Um, you get it from like an auto store or um, again, your big box store like Home Depot. And you hold the can far away and you just cover the thing in a matte finish. You lose some detail, but once that, um, but once that stuff dries, then it's pretty much waterproof. And the second way around it is a product called Mod Podge. Now, Mod Podge is interesting. I love the stuff. Um, it's kind of expensive. I mean, you get a tub of it a little smaller than this thing, okay, for about eight dollars. All right, that that's <laughs> that yeah, yeah that's a lot. Um, but here's what's awesome about it. It has a type of resin inside of it. So when it dries, it dries, um, it dries water salt, it, it dries wa waterproof. It literally gets waterproof. And once your Mod Podge dries, then you're good across the board with whatever it is that you put the Mod Podge on. So that right there is, um, is a really good thing. It's a really good thing. That's a, uh, make sure that some of my stuff stays hydrated here. Yeah, I just, you know, it gets really dry in here, which is why sometimes my nose runs. So, I won't do that. And, uh, so yeah. So, as we're waiting for that stuff to go, let's get back to the table. Alright, so, so we're just gonna let that stuff go. Now, in the meantime, what I like to do is I like to take the piece that I cut out, and I like to cut it down a little bit. Okay. There we go. it all the way down. Okay. Now, why do I like to do this? Um, it's so that I'm not putting stuff directly on this tonight. But the reason that we do this here is because we're going to put this back. Okay. But before we put this back, we're going to do some cool stuff to it. Okay. So, check it out here. Now this was the second piece that we pulled? Yeah, this is the second piece. So we're just gonna pop that right back in. And you see, you see right there, um, we have a drop in the floor. So we are making an internal trap and this is gonna be awesome. You know what, forget that. Sometimes you gotta change your plans. Best laid plans of mice and men happen in a book. Now, we're just gonna take our hot glue and we are going to get in there okay. there we are now what are we making we're making a couple of things we're making a portal we're making a slime pit we're making toxic, um, toxic ooze. Doesn't matter, okay? But, this particular technique, one of my favorites, okay? So yeah, and we're just gonna let that dry. Now, we're gonna do the same. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we've got the spike pit, the pit that goes spiky, spiky. I come out of the ground. I'm gonna, ah! This right here is an external trap. So now we are going to make an internal um, spike drop. So yeah, we're just gonna take a few, just a few popsicles, or not popsicle sticks, but um, toothpicks, like we did last time. Yeah, just do three on that one. And this right here, um, search for traps. Um, dexterity check, you know, you'll have um, so many players doing so many things, and um, yeah, so that's where we're at on that one, just uh, get it in there, oh, 
nice and full. Okay. And we're just going to add a small micro layer. Small micro layer, because we don't want it to go up as high as our foam core. Okay. There we go. And now, we're just going to add a little bit more in the places that we put our spikes. Boop. And now we just shove our spikes down there into the glue. You know what? Uh, these things are a little bit tall, so I'm just I'm gonna make these spikes way smaller. There we go. Now, important thing: when you're using a box cutter, like I do. What becomes important is you don't want to use long bits of blade on little bitty pieces. Okay? Little pieces, little blade. Big pieces, big blade. So little pieces, little blade. Because the more blade you got, the more dangerous that blade becomes. And if y'all are working with your kids, or if you are a kid, who is a latchkey kid like I was, and you don't have a whole lot of supervision, the last thing you want is to need to go to the doctor because <laughs> nobody's home. Alright, there's nothing, um, there is nothing more inconvenient in a day than having to ride public transportation while trying to watch your car. And so, be careful. Okay, there we go. Good. Now we've got roller spikes. And now, as you can see, that didn't take too long. <sighs> Try not to let your detritus get in there. Yes, I use the word detritus. As you do. Um, yeah. And if you notice, what I'm doing here is I'm just using the nozzle to reactivate some of that hot glue. Okay. Now you can add a little bit more if you want, you know. Um, using heat transfer via the laws of thermodynamics. Okay. And now, this gives us one of my favorite traps, a spiky pin. Spike pin! You know, it's efficient, it's elegant. In D and D, um, there are lots of different implementations for it. Spike, spike. It's important is to not to let your spikes fall in on each other. There we go. See? Yeah, look at that. Look at that right there. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, we're just gonna. Reactivate the glue a little bit. Add a few spiky bits. Now, if there are any professional crafters like special effects guys out there, or you know, um, any of the crafters that I have mentioned in previous shows, the ones that I look up to, yeah, I know I should be using tweezers and all that stuff, but still, I'm not you guys, and again, I don't believe there's a wrong way to do it. You know. I get the folks warmed up to let them know that they can do it. And then once they get used to me, they go on to you to learn the real advanced. Thing. How's that? Yeah. Room at the table for everybody. There we go. And for the art students and art teachers out there. Oh boy. Yeah, look at that. And now we're just going to let that dry. Or more of the point, let that cool. And we're just going to add a little more black bomb at the bottom. Just a little bit, a little bit of black foam to um, our little portals things here, okay? or our little slime pit. Yeah, slime pit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and this will help us with our. Um, yeah, this will really help us with our paint because we're going to be getting around to painting this thing in not too long. Okay. Now, I want to talk to you guys. Ah, now see, you guys might notice 
This will happen sometimes with your black bomb. And the reason is the two glues aren't exactly compatible, but they're not exactly incompatible. Alright, um, your PVA and water will um, slide off of your hot glue. Don't worry about it. Okay, it's not that critical. Okay, what is critical, what really is the big important part, is again, not worrying about it. Um, you'll be tempted to be like, oh no, it came off. No, 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 no don't worry about that. Okay, um, because the hot glue will take paint just fine as well. Okay, one of the reasons that I like using the black bomb all the way across the board, in all honesty, is because um, I kind of like consistency in color. I can see that now. And as much as I can see it, I don't like that I can see it, but it's a thing. Okay? Yeah. Look at that. A little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Where we generally use the black bomb on the places that aren't being touched by the, um, by the hot glue anyway. Because again, we're just trying to protect it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, look at that. Good. And again, the black bombing is adds a protective layer. Who would have thought that this one, the one with the little internal spikes, would be the one to um to get fixed first. Alright. Um so with the places that aren't really being happy. Okay. Um we are gonna start with some paint while we let this stuff dry. Because we gotta let it dry before we start any of our painting. So I want to um Hey what's up Damien? Yep, uh, again. Um for the record, yeah, we got boom chica boom five ten. Sweet! What's going on? What's going on, your majesty? And of course, what's up, Damien? I'm not as good as you and I ain't gonna claim to be. Uh <laughs> so yeah, as I was saying, um the stuff that we're making here. Okay, um, is real simple. Now, like I said, um, we can use this stuff for any of this stuff here. We've got our industrial sets, um, you know, lots of different industrial sets, lots of different dungeon sets, and, um, you know, wait a second, let's see if I can find one of the ones that I, yeah, there we, there we go, yeah. So, if we're looking at a dungeon like this, you know, we've got so many things that we can use in there. Alright? Now, you guys might be asking, um, a couple of things. One, why is it that we are using, um, why are we using four squares if the trap is only one square? I will show you. Here I have a nine square tile okay and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take one of the nine square tiles that's right this show is live okay and now we're gonna take our driest one and we're gonna pop it in there now our figures are on the trap or they're around here and if it comes to any sort of placement that you have a problem with turn it 90 degrees it's in a different square turn it 90 degrees again it's in a different square okay this is one of the big reasons that we can do this if this were only one square big we would have to keep up with something this big keep up with it fumble through our bags and stuff and um while we're fumbling through our bags you know um we might find it we might not we might get stuck by it blah but we'll have an easier time finding this yeah, much easier time hey this thing is ready for some paint sweet um so i wanted to talk to you guys while i'm mixing my paints up here i want to talk to you guys a bit about genre okay um, a lot of people ask me the question, um, if you like sci-fi so much, why do you do so much fantasy things? And I'm like, well, you gotta play the game that's available, 
where you live. <laughs> um, a lot of my friends don't like to do sci-fi. They love fantasy, they know fantasy, they're used to it. I'm like, okay, well the stuff transfers over. Now when I make my stuff, I can do, I can always figure out a way to shoehorn in fantasy elements to sci-fi. One of the easiest ways to do that is, um, they land on a planet and the planet is not very developed. So is it a jungle planet? If there's a jungle planet, throw a T-Rex at him. There you go, it's a dinosaur. Um, now, one of the big things, especially since um, we're making traps and stuff for dungeons, right? And y'all know, not a big fan of dungeon delving. But, you know, there's always that whole, hey, you're talking about dungeon delving, and blah, 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 and dungeon delving is something that you do in, in, in fantasy. How can you do it in sci-fi? Me, 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 me. What if you're playing modern and there are no dungeons? Me, me, me. Guess what? You're wrong. Okay? Because a dungeon, in practice, is a sealed off place where you travel in a labyrinthine manner. Um, from one end to another in order to find your way out or to find a thing that's in there and find your way out. Well, I don't know about you, but that sounds like every sewer level to me. You know, in sci-fi, you can make a dungeon by making people go into the sewers. You just have to constantly say, oh yeah, and it stinks. Oh yeah, and it stinks. Oh yeah, and a piece of poop flies by you. Um, also, I don't know about you, but if a dungeon is an underground layer, okay, a real underground layer, um, well, that sounds like every office building, you know, can't judge a book by its cover when it comes to that stuff, so easily done with, um, just a simple idea. They go into an industrial warehouse. And inside the warehouse, boom, they don't know their way around. They don't know what hallways lead to what rooms. They don't know if the crazy Illuminati guy decided to um, to make this place a maze with trapped rooms and robots and stuff like that. So um, that's one of the reasons that I'm cool with doing this type of thing. There's this idea this idea uh something i saw on one of my youtube channels that i watch about toys okay and it said that the toy sets of the 1980s really killed our imaginations because you know you got castle grayskull with he-man so you know what figures go into castle grayskull you know what castle grayskull is the tv show shows what Ca castle grayskull is and that the sorceress lives inside it and blah, 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 right so why are you going to use your spaceman in castle grayskull well, you turn on something like Toy Story, and you got what it was like before those playsets. You got Andy playing with Woody the Cowboy and Buzz the Space Guy, but they're having a tea party with Lil Bo Peep. What are you doing with all that mixing genre? And the answer is, shut up, he's having fun. And that is one of the major things that I do with this stuff. Um, when I put together these traps, Guess what? I can use a freaking abandoned spaceship as a freaking dungeon. You know, I dare you to watch Aliens or Event Horizon and tell me they knew their way around. You know, and once you once you unleash monsters in there, monsters and traps and bad situations, heck, Galaxy Quest even in it where it was like hey you're trying to get to the engine you just go through here you go through here you go through here and now you just got to get to the chompers and you're home free and it's like the chompers why would that be in an engine because it's awesome in a narrative way and that's what these games are for anyway I mixed up my paint so uh let's get back to the table so i mixed up my paint i just took you know a little bit of my melted chocolate, mixed it with some white to get the tan that I like to do dry brushing. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just dry brushing to bring out 
some of that texture that we put on in there. Okay, look at that. Yeah, texture. Ooh, looky, 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 looky. Yeah. Yeah, we got texture. Mmm, texture. Look at all that. My, my, my. Now, I'm using a tiny brush on this one because I'm doing tiny pieces. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay, a little bit of dry brushing. Barely touching it. Just trying to get the top parts. There we go. Yeah, top parts, top parts, top parts. Dry brush, dry brush, dry brush. Holoban, holoban, holoban. I got the thing of Oaxaca. Okay. There. There we go. Ooh, look at that. Okay. Yeah. See? I'm not. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to take this tiny bit of white. Pop that on my easel. All we need. I'm going to take some of the stuff I was using the dry brush. Pop that in there. Pop a little white in there. Mix them up until we get something. And I'm sure you guys are noticing something, Damien, that I'm not watering down my paint. Um, I never water down my paints when I dry brush. Because I want to make a dry I want a dry brush, so I make it wetter. Okay. And yeah. Um, as I've said on this show before, these are cheap, cheap, cheap brushes. And again, when you're doing the dry brushing, just when you lighten it up, stick to them edges. Stick to them edges. Get that. Once you lighten it up, yeah, really get those edges in to show, hey, kids. There we go. I need the more. Get some of them edges. Now, not all my stuff is dry, and I can see that. So, boom. Here we go. That's in there. Look at that. We've gone from blacker than the blackest black times infinity to something that looks a little bit more like stone. Okay? Um, now, what are we going to do? Well, one of the things... <laughs> what? This is stupid? The whole show is stupid? Oh, well, thanks. Sigourney Weaver taught crap on me. So, what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a cover for these spiky bits. Now, spiky bits can be fun. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to clean off my brush. I'm going to add some green. Okay, some of my the spiky green which kind of looks like sick okay. and to give it just a little more I'm going to add a couple of drops of blue ink just a couple like a little bit of blue ink drop yeah, just one drop one drop of blue ink and one drop of the ink that is the same color as an aggressively mediocre band and it was all yellow Look at the ink, and now it falls for you. And now we're just gonna, yeah. Now that is really blue. Oh my God, look at how blue that is. So we're just gonna add a little more yellow. I still need to No, I'm bleeding myself. Okay, and that's still a little, a little green, a little green. This is a gorgeous green. Uh, we're going to take some of that white, and we're going to mix that in to pale it out just a little bit. Okay, yeah, we're going to pale out that green just a little bit. We're going to pale it out just a little bit more. There we go. That is looking a little bit more like sick. I like it when stuff looks like it's sick. And now we're just going to paint it down here inside that. Why? We don't know what's down there. What is that stuff? You don't know. All you know is you don't want to fall on it. <laughs> you know, like, ooh, my God, these are spikes and green ooze. Oh, it's ooze. What is the secret? It's the secret that's ooze. Yep, yep, yep. Movie drop. Um, yeah, look at all that. We're just gonna, yeah, and we're just gonna 
Whoop, that in, one that in, slop it on down, that. Okay, yeah, and you see, now, we got, ooh, it's kind of swampy and stuff like that. Now, if this is a sewer, then imagine what it is. If this is a dungeon that was put together by a mad wizard, imagine what it is. If this is an industrial warehouse thing, then you know what? Yeah, just call it toxic waste. Who cares? Okay, and now, because I have a little bit of uh, crossover, I'm just going to do that on the Masonite itself, because, um, why not? There we go. And there we are. Here we go. Spike hit. You can make a ninja turtle. You can make a ninja turtle with it. Okay. And see, look at that. Uh, but you still need a little bit of something. Right? You, need, you need a little bit of something. So we're gonna let that dry, and we're gonna go to one of our other pieces. Okay. Now we're gonna get a new brush because we've got multiple things that we're doing. And we've got another one that's ready to dry. Um, how are we gonna do that? Well, it's time to hang off our brush a little bit. So we take a water, water, water. Yay, water bottle. Endorsements? No, nobody's paying me for this. <laughs> Yeah, there you go, industrial goop. You know, like Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, okay. Um, just to make this look a little, just a tiny bit more professional, we're gonna take our, our brush and we're just gonna add a little bit of water. Okay, believe it or not, as much as water isn't good for dry brushing, water is good to help acrylic paint dry faster. Cool. Okay, yeah, and you know what? I got some wackiness. We're gonna take our brush and we're just gonna flick our goop right on top of that. Why? Shut up. <laughs> See? Yeah, it gives it a little more, um, a little bit more flavor. You know, let me see if I can get that in there. Yeah, it's a little bit more fluid, you know. And this is before flocking or anything like that. I, I don't really like to do the flocking. But, yeah, clean off our brush. Okay. And, yeah, I have a piece of fabric underneath my cutting mat just so that I can wipe stuff down. And now, we're going to go right back to dry brushing. <laughs> Um, so we're gonna take our light dry brush stuff. There we go. Now when you're using cheap acrylic paint, which I love using cheap acrylic paint, it dries out pretty quick. And the quicker that it dries off, the faster we need it for a dry brush. There we go. There. So, just so that you guys aren't stuck watching me paint this stuff, let's talk. So, uh, yeah. So as far as switching stuff up, um, there's a lot of things. But there's always a genre that a lot of people talk about, but hardly ever use. And I want to talk about that with you guys a little bit right now. And that genre is one of my favorites. Romantic comedy. Kidding, kidding, kidding. Anybody who knows me in real life knows I hate romantic comedies. <laughs> um, they're, they're, they're not my bag, baby. No, um, we're talking horror. Okay. Um, you see, horror is one of the original cross-platform genres. It doesn't matter what kind of story you're telling um you can drop some horror into the story and how do you do that because you know let's face it we are post Buffy the Vampire Slayer we live in the age of Joss Whedon so you might think that comedy comedy is um the best cross-platform thing and I would say that you are incorrect okay because comedy 
in and of itself is the act of cutting tension where horror drama and most good storytelling is based not on cutting tension but on building it okay you build tension okay and um that is one of the things that i am really big about pushing through so it doesn't matter if it's sci-fi it doesn't matter if it's fantasy Oh, it doesn't even really matter if it's um, some romantic comedy. Truth be told, you can always, always inject just a tad bit of horror into your games. Um, you know, so like, when I'm going through this stuff, I mixed up a little sort of turquoise um, to put through this, because I'm going to go for a few layers on this other group thing. Um, and you'll see why. Um, because yeah, we another pig. Because I like pigs. Um, yeah, I like Brad Pitt too. I think he's an amazing actor. Um, one of, one of the big things that I've come to learn is suspense is fear. Okay? Um, suspense is the fear of the known well, the mostly known and some of the unknown. Um, one of my favorite talks about suspense is from the master himself, Alfred Hitchcock. And he explains suspense thusly. When you have a shot of a bomb, or more to the point, if you have a bunch of people in an airport talking and a bomb goes off, then you have an action scene. But if you have a shot of the bomb, and then you cut to the people having the conversation, you have suspense. Is the bomb gonna go off? You know, um, what are they gonna do if the bomb goes off? You know, you have a sense of fear. There is a sense of fear, a sense of dreaded anticipation and it's awesome okay um and one of the things about horror especially when you're playing these fantasy games is let's face it we play these games to fight and survive and hopefully beat monsters okay but you know you throw a monster somewhere you gotta have some context, right? <laughs> some context for a monster. It's just like, okay, and um, you drop your kid off at school and dragon. And it's like, okay, well that's kinda cool, but where did the dragon come from? Why was there a dragon, you know, um, why was there never a setup for a dragon or anything like that? It was just, boom, dragon. Like, what the, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't, no, no, why? Why, why? Why is there a dragon? You, you see what I mean? Um, but in a lot of these fantasy games, in fact, in most of these fantasy games, you have things like skeletons and mummies and zombies and mimics. I love mimics, you know? Um, and they're monsters, and there's a place for monsters, you know? But the monster in a romantic comedy tends to be one of the members of the couple. Um, <laughs> and this stuff is even more important than love triangles. You know, um, again, when it comes to dungeon delving, and I'm not a fan of it, um, there's a place for it in any genre. So these things that we're building today are good no matter what game you're running. If you're running Rangers of Shadow Deep, and you're like, is the room trapped? I don't know. If you're running D&D, and it's like, oh, well, is that wall trapped? I don't know. If you're running um, Call of Cthulhu, is that trapped? I don't know. If you're running Big Eye, Small Mouth with Sailor Moon, you know, um, is her dresser drawer trapped? Did Queen Beryl send a monster there? You know, these are all the things that you can use these traps for because there's a place for them all over the genre. 
okay? Um, all over the genre, all over every genre. And it's pretty awesome. So, be creative, have fun, and understand that you can throw a trap in anywhere and heighten tension, cause suspense, um, throw a little element of fear. Now, full disclosure, okay, because I like full disclosure topics and things like that. Um, there was a time in my life that I wanted to be a writer, and I use um, tabletop RPGs um, as a method to really pump out my storytelling beats, okay? Um, that's a big thing for me, okay? I like having beats. It's like, is now a good time to do stuff? What I don't like are characters and dialogue. I just, I don't understand how people talk. Um, I use a lot of 50 cent words when I'm not on camera. I'm like, yeah, no, it's fine. I've, I've been loquacious ever since I was a child. Like, real talk, and you can ask my mom if ever you meet her, my first words, my very first words, like, oh my god, you know, the kid said mama. I never said mama. I never said dada. You know, or at least I eventually said it, but, you know. Um, but as a child, my very first words were, excuse me, I don't mean to be a bother, but can someone tell me what a restroom is? Not, I got pay. But, oh, terribly sorry. I, I, I am so, I am rather apologetic, but uh, I seem to be a bit indisposed at the moment, and I was wondering if I could use your facilities. <laughs> you know. Um, and this was before Baby Stewie. This was back in the 70s. So, yeah. Um, does that mean I was a little bit of a psycho? No. Um... <laughs> But yeah, so I tend to be loquacious, I don't write dialogue the way that a lot of people actually talk in the real world, or should I say, speak. You know, even, even when I was a kid and mom would call from wherever it was she was calling, I'd be like, let me speak, I want to speak to her, I would like to speak on the phone please, and opposed to, let me talk to mama, I want to talk to mama. Um, and all of these story elements that I talk to you guys about. Um, they have a place, and they're very real, um, and they're universal. I deal a lot in universal tropes, you know, because, um, again, a good story, a good story has a whole bunch of elements, you know, it has all of it, it has character tension, it has, um, you know, a lot of people, especially on the internet, like to sound clever. And they try and try and quote George Martin in the Yes, the best stories are the stories about man in conflict with himself. And he's not wrong. He ain't wrong about that. Um, but what I won't give him credence or leeway on is um Oh yeah, I should probably show you guys this part. Um, yeah, but what I won't give him credence or leeway on is or more to the people that um that um, try and quote him, is man's conflict with himself comes in a lot of flavors, but each part of it, it's, it's like going through the stages of death, you know, anger, denial, depression, rejection, and acceptance, and all that stuff, right? Um, a good story has elements of anger, and fear, and anticipation, and horror, and the idea that they might not win. I mean, those things are all real, yo. So, when it comes down to those things, um, you have to, um, you really have to balance them out. It's like cooking. You have to have a good flavor balance, you know? Um, and we're putting this stuff together so that you have a few things that you can use. So, there we go. So, we are now down to our first stuff, I, I just added a little bit of dry brush in here, uh, a little bit of dry brush in, get that stone look out of there. Um, again, I learned from a very talented special effects guy, never use just all white. The stuff starts looking a bit black. Okay, it looks unnatural. Um, so when I'm doing stone, because I like stony textures, um, I tend to dry brush with a tan 
and I go a bit darker, okay? Now, I'm gonna use that melted chocolate, don't eat the paint, and we are gonna paint the portal. Now this portal here, like I said, um, like I said earlier, the acrylic paint will stick to the dry brush, okay? And we are gonna go real creative with this thing. Okay, really, really, really creative. Um, there's a color we haven't used in this particular project, and that is going to be pretty awesome. So, we're going to make this kind of look like an earthen thing to start. Okay, so we're just going to cover that whole thing in straight up melted chocolate. You know, we'll, we'll call it a Hershey portal. You know, actually, no, that, that sounds like a booty hole. Um, we'll call it the Ghirardelli, um, the Ghirardelli portal, yeah, or the Toph portal, yeah, Toph, Toph is cool, um, and you can see where I dropped this after, um, after making the portal bits, but guess what, it's fine, okay, it's perfectly okay, because look at that, boom, we've got three dimensions now, we've got stuff that's actually working on its way through, and again, full disclosure on this guy, um, I left my black paint in another room, so we're doing a lot of this without any straight up black. Okay. I've got some ink, but yeah, that's coming out. Okay, so we've got that, and we're just going to let that dry. Now, yeah, look at that. It looks like something natural, but something kind of, you know, weird messed up. But <coughs> we're going to let that dry. Now that we've done most of the dry brushing, we're going to add just a little bit of the dirt on the pop-up. Okay just so that it looks like these spikes kind of busted through the rubble and took some of the ground. Okay. A little bit of that, a little bit of that. Yeah, a little bit of that. I'm watching three screens right now, trying to make sure I'm giving you a good shot. Okay, and now, yeah, look at that. Uh, that looks like a thing. Now, some people would go wooden for their spikes because, you know, um, bamboo spikes in a hole, read a history book. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take just some straight up silver and we're just going to silver over this stuff. And don't worry. Ooh, that was a mistake. Yeah, we're going to silver up this stuff. Um, don't worry, we're going to add a wash later. But I want a little bit of an metallic feel on those things, alright? And then we're going to get to the color that we haven't really used at all, and that is going to be awesome. Okay, and now, what we are going to do is we're going to take some of that silver, okay, and we're just going to dry brush the top of this stuff. Why? Because I want it to look a little bit magic. A little bit techy, you know, call it nanites, call it um, something stupid, I don't care, call it what you will. Okay? Now you might, this might not be coming up on the camera because I don't have that kind of technology that will cost another $10,000. But yeah, it's looking a bit shiny, and I like that. So we're gonna clean off our brush. And we are going to use a little bit more silver for the other spikes that we used. Just a little bit, boom, 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 brush, 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 and there we go. Yeah. See? There we go. Yeah. Brushy brush, 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 brush. You know, and if you've got, um, if you happen to have, like, a bronze or something, that's cool. Um, but if you guys notice, if it's coming up on the camera, I'm doing a mild, not quite a dry brush, not quite a wet brush, um, but somewhere in between. I'm doing a brush on this, and it's giving me a very nice rust type color. So yeah, big rusty spikes. Okay. And now, um, 
becomes one of my favorite grapes. First, we gotta do something about this because this is looking a bit weird. So with that same brush, we're just gonna spread up a little bit, add a little bit of silver, add a little bit of white into our turquoise. Okay, and we are gonna dry brush with that to um I, you know, just to give it a little character. As you can see, I'm not doing a whole lot in there. That's really nice. There we go. Oh, yeah, that worked. Yeah, see? Now, you can see that? Alright, yeah, look at that. And now, once that dries, we're going to do a little bit of inking. Um, just to make it awesome. But first, yeah, we're going to do just a tiny bit of inking, which means we're going to put some water there okay and now we're gonna take some of our blue ink and instead of dripping we're not gonna drip we're just gonna dab boom there we go actually still not gonna drip just gonna dab you know what let's just drip one drop one drop that's all that's all walk away walk away just a drop just drop Okay, because remember, paint, um, ink, once it dries, it's a lot more transparent than it likes to come off that. Okay. And yeah, we're inking with dirty water, because we're doing a dirty thing. And now we're just gonna, whoop, whoop. See what we're doing here? We're just throwing the ink right in there. Not a whole lot. Okay. Yeah, that gives it a little bit of a wetter feel. Just kind of throw some blue ink into those crevices there, because why not? Um, there we go, and there's a little bit of a water pit. And now we're going to take the same ink and put it on our green hoop. Okay, just a little bit. Yeah, what I'm doing here is I'm filling up the brush, I'm laying it down almost flat, and I'm just letting the ink do the work. Okay, a lot of people think, oh my god, I have a brush, I have to touch every little bit. No, 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 no. Let the ink do the work. It ain't that difficult. See? Look at that. And we got something that's working a little bit better. See, it's looking a bit more grimy, a little bit more you know, inkish, a little bit, uh, just, just a little dirtier, you know, but we have a lot of primary colors that are represented. I remember when I was talking about that whole flavor balance thing? Okay, we are missing, yeah, hang on, a little bit, oh yeah, that blue ink, yeah, that, that's where it looks up, oh yeah, just putting that all the way in there. Ah. There we go. Yeah, that is working. Okay. See that? Yeah. Look at all that. Don't worry. We've got one more inking thing to do before everything is done. There. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice and spiky? Isn't that nice and freaking toxic? Okay. And now, just to add a little insult to injury, we are going to ink up we're just going to do a little bit of a yellow inking wash over that when it dries, okay? But, as I was saying about, um, about the flavor balance and stuff, yeah. Well, it's time for us to pull out, boom, our redemption. It's time to bring out some red. We need some red, and we're going to do two things with this red. Okay, I pulled out the red, and I pulled out the yellow wash for a reason. Because right now, our, um, our portal is almost dry. 
almost. So what we're gonna do, if you guys notice, I mix a lot of paint, like a lot. So we're just gonna take that much of the red, a little bit of the pink, a little bit more of the pink. So we're just gonna let that sit. Okay. Now if you notice, we've got some ink on the brush, but that's okay, because again, you never wanna work with a solid single color. Not a primary color, not a shade. All right, so now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna wipe out most of our stuff and we're gonna get sort of a blood mustard curdle thing. And then we're just gonna follow our circle. We're gonna follow our circle here. Yeah. And it gives us this really tone. Okay. Follow our circle, because again, this is a portal. Brought up by the earth is, you know, like, welcome to earth, have a portal, okay? and these are cheap paints, so you're going to have to layer the stuff on there, okay? but yeah, there we go, layer it on, draw your circle, make it big, make your circle ring, yeah, alright, there we go. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And then we're going to let that go. Other side, boom. Look at that. Oh. It's all goofy. This way. Now, let's have some fun with a little bit of color paint theory. If you're noticing, we're not getting a whole lot of cool looking red. So, we're going to take just a tiny bit of our of our blue wash and we're going to add that in and you might ask why because we are sort of making a visceral wash okay? and we're just going to put that in there and you'll find that the purple makes it stick out just a little bit and yeah oh, there we go and instead of washing our brush uh, I almost fell. Instead of washing our brush now, we're going to grab a new one. Yep, grabbing a new brush. Because now, now that we got that going, where did I put my water? That's where I put my water. Ooh. Putting that in there, letting a lot of this stuff dry, and we're gonna take our water, we're gonna add it to that yellow ink, okay? And we are gonna add it to some of our previous traps. Look at the dirt. Well, now, don't eat the yellow snuff. There we go. Just a little bit. Good, good, good. Get that in there. Get it thin. You can always add more ink. You know, you can do 10, 11, 12, 13 washes if you need to. Okay, here we go on that. Now, we leave that alone to the final wash. With this one. Okay, we still have a little bit of cooling blue, and that's fine. Now we turn that pooling blue into pooling green. Oh, that's looking nice and sick. Yeah, now that looks like something I don't want to fall into. Look at that. Blah. Okay, and we're going to do the same. Put the spikes down here. Spikey, spike, spike it. Okay, put some of that water in there. Okay, and... And that's it. That's it. Now we walk away. We walk away from that. And we're going to do a new dry brush. Okay? And by a new dry brush, I mean we're going to take some of that red that we dealt with earlier. The red that we mixed with, with um, the yellow to give us a slight pale orange. Okay? 
light pale orange. So we're gonna light pale orange, yeah. Slightly pale. And we're gonna go back to our portal here, and we're just gonna dry brush right on top. Right on top. Hopefully this has dried. Yeah. Right on top. And there we go. And now, for the final bit. Final, final. We are going to mix our paint together in some dirty water. Okay. This had my black wash in it. You know, I had a black wash in the whole thing. And yeah. Okay, there we go. Nice and thin. And now, we'll take our older piece. Oh, look at that. Can you see that? That's what we're looking for. Okay, now we know the wash is working the way that we want the wash to work. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. That is just, yeah. Now, a lot of the uh, veteran crafters, a lot of the good crafters, um, they pre-make a lot and put them in bottles, you know, and I mean to do that eventually. I might do that this week. Um, there we go. Yeah. You see how that looks? Oh yeah, that looks nice and dirty, get a little slimy, but that will let us know that we're getting to what we want. Okay? And that is where we go in. We take this. And we just add our wash to the top of our little tiles. And again, the reason, uh, you guys should know by now, the reason that this stuff tends to take me a little bit is because I do multiple pieces in front of you guys. If you guys were just doing one tile at a time, this would take about 20 minutes, if that. And never forget that creative work spawns other creative work. Okay, so that 20 minutes will probably go by and you'll be like, Oh, wait, I'm going to make another one of these. Oh, I'm going to make another one of these. Oh, I'm going to make another one of these. You know, and guess what? You're going to. If you live with someone, you got a significant other, or you got parents or something, <laughs> um, listen to them. And there's a great video out from one of my favorite crafters on YouTube um, called Stuff Crafters Say. And it always comes down to things like, no, I don't need to eat right now. No, I'm not hungry. No, I'm just going to finish this. No, I'm just going to finish this thing up. Um, okay, I just have to get past this step. I just have to get past this step. I just have to get past this step. And then it's like four or five o'clock in the morning. You can you can lose your life to this stuff. So remember, moderation in all things. Okay, make one. Now I'm making a bunch of traps right now because I just like having them laying around. Final. Okay. So yeah, listen to that. And my favorite thing about doing stuff like this is it doesn't have to match the rest of it. It's really um, because these things are super duper modular. So, you're only gonna pull them out when you're ready to use them. You know, when someone actually steps on the trap and then you go, Aha! You did the trap! Arrgh. And again, I like using four. What I find is best is use no less than two. Okay? No less than two squares. Um, because it's a lot easier to find. Now, if you're wondering what we're doing right now, um, we just have we just put the ink and stuff on, so we are giving them time to dry before we do the glamour shot. <coughs> um, my cat wants you to come out of the magic box. I have no idea what you're talking about. What is going on in the chat, guys? Because you you guys are killing me today. Uh, yeah, low budget musical comedies. Oh God, nope, nope, nope. Running away. La 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 la. Um, I don't even know how many people are watching. <laughs> um, oh, only got one person left. All right, well, that's cool. Um, I just got so caught up in doing the job, y'all know how it is. <laughs> um, oh, your cat is attacking the TV. That is pretty cool. Um, so yeah. 
So again, we use the stuff um, according to our needs for um, our stuff. Now I put four different traps down, you know, an acid or goop trap, um, a poison spike pit, um, a magic, a magic teleportation portal pit, and of course, you know, the good old spikes out of the ground, those I like in the end jumps, you know, and, um, these are things that can be used in dungeons and horror, um, well, again, and it doesn't matter what genre, all that matters, yeah, all that matters is understanding what adds up to what other thing. Okay. Um, how long have we been here? Yeah, two hours and 14 minutes. That works. Um, I'm doing my best to get to uh, Twitch partner status. Okay. But that means I got to average 75 viewers per broadcast. Oh, ah, oh. ah, oh, that kills me. Um, so please share this stuff, you know, let people know, hey, this is a cool little crafting thing. I'm probably going to put this thing up on YouTube um, for two hours. They're like, oh my god, you you just put up a whole crafting video. Yeah, I do this stuff in real time. I do this stuff in real time so that you guys can see the stuff that I like doing. Um, whew. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, you know, that that's a real big thing. So, let me, um, I gotta wick away some of the other colors. Yeah. And of course, once they pop up, arr! let's see, what else, what other stuff did I bring out? No, you shouldn't have been there. No. <laughs> but yeah, so these are like, uh, uh, yeah, these are a lot of the things that we try and put together, and we can use them in a plethora or a myriad. I like, I like using that term. Um, a myriad of ways. There we go. So, just setting up the glamour shot here. Um, where is that other thing? Oh, well, must have it up here. Yes. Cool. So yeah, I tend to set up a glamour shot every week for you guys to see. Um, hmm. There we go. That's in there. But yeah, so these are a lot of the other things. So, now that we have all of this stuff, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys what the thingamabobbers and the Jim and G who's it's look like. And then, ah. Uh, yeah. Boom. Tile. Tile, because this one sucks. And of course, um, there. And we'll just put that right there. Okay, on this table. Okay. Yeah. So, again, when we are putting stuff together and doing these things, um, don't be afraid to get creative. Don't be afraid to ask yourself, what is it that you really need? You know, I'm a great big fan of that particular question. Yeah, there we go. There we are. Bah. Bah. Trying to make my glamour shots work a lot better. So yeah, and um, whoop. here we go. And so, let's take a look at what we got over here. Because, again, doing this live, I don't know, I think I should get some videos on me crazy. Yeah. 
there. Cool. So let's take a look at what this whole thing looks like once we have everything put together. Okay? Yeah. I think you guys are going to like the result. And there we are. Okay, we got our little guy. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Yeah, we got a little guy who didn't survive the trap. Right on top, we've got another crap over here. And again, these things just look kind of cool. I might, um, I might fix a few things in white. Um, ooh, no, two, yeah. And, um, and yeah, so that's what we got. Look at all that. My, 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 my. So, there we go. There is our traps in our dungeons. We can do this all day. And I hope you guys enjoyed yourself today in this particular game. I'm gonna post a couple of um I'm gonna post a couple of the glamour shots up on Twitter and Instagram and all our social media. Y'all know how that whole thing works. But yeah, I wanna say thank you to you guys to show up. If you guys got any questions or comments or any of those other cool things, and if you guys want to show the stuff that y'all make, because I'd really like to see what you guys do. Um, that would be really cool um, to see if you guys take stuff from the show and be like, yeah, I made this. Check out what I can do. Um, that would be cool. All you got to do is send an email with your pictures and all that stuff over to, oh wait, wrong one, <laughs> over to, nope, wrong one again, ah, so many, um, boop, 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 there we go, yeah, I'm normally better about that, yeah, send the stuff over to backinthedeck at gmail.com, it's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k -E -E at gmail.com, um, and, um, you know, talk to us, put the stuff to find, hey, look, I made this from Hobby Hall. And um, this is cool. I got some traps that we're going to be using. And we are also going to be posting up more pictures and things from, um, from a lot of our things that we're going to be doing over the weekend. And, you know, hit us up on Twitter, Instagram. Um, if you're part of that wretched hive of scum and villainy known as Facebook, join Deckers on the group and you'll be able to see a lot of the pictures that we have um, that we put up. Add your own or send them to them ourselves. Um, check out our Patreon, you know, uh, if you want to help support us by sending us money once a month, that would be cool, especially if you think that what we do is worth more than a soda a month, you know, that would be kind of cool. And, um, you know, as you guys can see, we did most of this stuff out of scraps of, um, yeah, we did most of this stuff out of scraps, yay, scraps of, um, of foam core, some glue, a couple of other things, and um, yeah, this is the stuff that you guys can do. So, putting this out there just to say, if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disabilities, or your budgets, you just tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the bag. This is so great, the Cinematic Sorcerer saying thank you guys for tuning in to the hobby.